Hey, John here. I wanted to just th throw together a quick video and show you how to make these uh, blocks so you can make your own camera boom should you want to film your workbench and uh, po uh, post videos on how to make stuff, all right? So there's a camera boom hanging from the ceiling in the corner of my workspace, and you can see it's made up of these yellow blocks and this black one over here. Underneath here, I got a uh, original Pi 1 version 1 camera, these yellow blocks are called cross blocks and you can see it connected to three quarter inch conduit there's a raspberry pi again with a mounting block so i can mount that on the boom as well and up here you see how i mounted it into the ceiling now let's pause this video for a second and have a look see at exactly how i decided to mount this to my ceiling if you want to make one of these and you're going to mount it to your ceiling be incredibly careful about how you do it. Notice this pipe has a bend in it like this. Notice I have three clamps. The two on the right are, for the most part, uh, on the section of pipe that runs vertical. And then the other one, the, the top center, the, the leftmost clamp, is after the bend. As it is, this pipe cannot wiggle its way through those clamps and fall down on my head. If you put a straight pipe up into the ceiling and just put a bunch of clamps on it like that, rest assured, eventually it'll slide down through those uh, little hook type uh, clamps and, and hit you. Uh, in, in hindsight, I probably should have drilled some holes in the conduit and just put some screws into the beam itself. Again, it wouldn't be able to fall out at all. Now, if we back up the video a little bit, you'll see another thing that's kind of critical. You see these two bolts right here? This top one right here, if you screw it all the way in, it will put a dent into this vertical piece of conduit. So this is actually a coupler, all right, a conduit coupling device that you, you screw in these screws. What they do is they put like a dimple in the conduit. Once that's in there and it dimples the conduit, this is not going to slide off the end of that conduit. This thing here prevents this block from sliding off the conduit, which every single minute of every day, every time you move it especially, it will want to slide down and knock this whole thing on your head. And as you saw, there's a 10-pound counterweight to hold this thing and, and make, make it stable. I mean, what else does a maker do with their weight set from high school uh, than to uh, find a way to incorporate it into their projects, right? <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's the safety part of the discussion, right? Don't let this thing fall on your head. Now, you can look and see how I mounted these cross, uh, uh, cross blocks so that I can make the boom go up and down. And I can also spin it around that vertical pipe on the right. So this gives me two degrees of freedom, all right? If we back up the video a little bit more and look at these yellow cross blocks, these things allow me to uh, reposition the camera, make it tilt and pan to whatever I want, as well as rotate it to keep it square with my bench work and things like that. And, and to do that, I had to combine multiple cross blocks to make that happen. All right, And you can see how I did it right here. I believe this is the fewest you can do in order to get any uh, rotational as well as tilt and pan as well as some other angles that you can use to adjust the camera that you know, may or may not be of use in your particular situation. But I find all this uh, uh, to be kind of the minimum useful setup. And you can see that I've got wing nuts on these to allow me to loosen them up and tighten them and slide them around. All right, so you got the general gist on how these things all fit together and what you're supposed to do with them. Let's take a closer look at how you actually like, kind of like set up these blocks if you wanted to make your own, okay? First of all, this is, a, a, as you can see, a, one of these Raspberry Pi high-quality cameras in here. This is actually a zoom lens. I'll put a link to this particular product on Amazon below. I don't get any money for this stuff. I just tell you what I bought, and uh, be that as it may. The reason I'm kind of excited about this is that, you know, I bought this thing last year. I wanted to do some close-up work, um, and it's a 60 millimeter uh, zoom lens. Now I'm not Mr. You know, lens. Oh yeah, it's an F1. I don't know what half of this stuff means. Uh, but the uh, the bigger number here means more light can go through your camera, so you can film in darker uh, areas. That's what this is all about. And the um, one third inch CS, you should know about the C and CS jazz with these high quality cameras. You'll notice I've mounted this lens incorrectly, and that's kind of why I'm going on about this lens in particular right now. This is meant to shoot stuff that's far away. It's supposed to be a CS mount lens, and yet I put the C adapter in here. Why did I do that? 
Well, I actually bought this to use it as a microscope, okay? I'm going to use this to film stuff from about two feet away, and I'm going to zoom way in. Now, if you mounted this on the high-quality base without this C adapter, which is the right way to do it, right? You mount it without it because it's a CS lens. It's supposed to be mounted on the base. Well, what happens is, you know, while it says it's a third-inch uh, CS mount lens, you know, this lens is not that big. It turns out that the image that shines on the sensor, if you're that close, is too small. You end up with these, like, kind of uh, rounded corners, and it's uh, what they call vignetted. Uh, the, the image is just not too uh, big enough to hit the sensor all the way. By putting this extender here on here, okay, what happens is when the image, you know, focuses through these lenses, it gets bigger before it hits the uh, sensor. And the adjustments of the lenses and stuff like that, it allows you to still focus the image perfectly fine. And because it's bigger when it hits the sensor, which is the key, it gets rid of the rounded corners. Now, this is only useful if you're really filming up close, all right? And that's kind of what this is for. In fact, if you go out and if you're like Mr. Camera Dude, you can buy these like extender rings for regular old cameras that turn your regular lenses in what they call a macro lens. And that's kind of what I've done here, okay? So if you end up with a lens that looks wrong and it's a CS mount lens, just put the C adapter in there. And if you can focus it, because you realize as you get further and further from here, it might be that you, you know, the lens is really not designed for this. Uh, it may not focus, but a lot of lenses probably will, and you'll be able to get much closer and get, you know, more detail in your images. That's the point here, okay? Again, I'll put a link to this, uh, the where I bought this thing from. I think it's like $23. So this is a lot less expensive than Raspberry Pi telephoto lens at $50, uh, which I used, if you watch my channel, this is the actual camera and lens that did most of the filming of the stuff that looks like this with the old computer paper that I uh, hand scrawl drawings on all the time, okay? It just so happens that it, it is, in my opinion, that this lens versus this camera here, okay? You can buy four of these right now on Amazon for $15, or one lens and one high-quality camera for $100, this picture on my preview monitor, which I have sitting right behind here, looks better to me than most of the videos that I shot with this camera and lens right here. I'm just saying. It's very subjective. You know, your mileage may vary. Uh, I thought about it for a while, and I kind of concluded that since I'm shooting 1080p video, and I'm using the Raspi vid command line program to capture the video with the Raspberry Pi when I'm using both of these cameras. That's what I'm using right now to film this. Uh, it turns out, I suspect, I mean, first of all, you know that they crop the image on this sensor way down, right? Half the pixels are probably thrown away. Then they decimate it even further in order to get the, because uh, this is like a 12 megapixel camera and you're watching a video right now that's two megapixels. <laughs> How do they do that? Well, they throw a lot of data away. So I think that when you're doing that with this thing and that particular app, it probably does it in a way that I, my personal preference uh, is that I don't like the image, the resulting image, as much as I like this super cheap one. And I love it when things like that come together. All right. So uh, if you want to make one of these, you want to film from this is about, uh, I don't know, about two feet away right now with this little camera or a mate to this exact same uh, kind of camera. Um, uh, you can get away with that. Super cheap. I love super cheap. Okay. All right, so what the heck is I on about here? All right, uh, these are, if you download the stuff from GitHub and you take the STL files, these are the actual STL file. They've just printed them. Let's look at this really closely because this is kind of a subtlety uh, with the video that I shot with the weight, uh, the 10-pound counterweight that I had in the beginning of this video. This is what we call a collet, all right? Now, the whole point of this collet and the way you're supposed to use these things, in general, this is a, uh, a carriage bolt, right? That means it is a round head. You can't put a wrench on it, okay? It has a square neck inside here. And that square net makes with the square hole in the parts that I printed here, okay? Now, when you pull it off your printer, there might be some cobwebs and stuff in there. You gotta maybe do a little bit of this if, you, if, it, if the bolt doesn't want to go through. Quarter inch carriage bolt, and the, and, you know, you rotate the neck, the square part, so that it uh, pops in the square hole that's in the base. That uh, holds it for you, so you don't need to have a wrench to clown around with when you're tightening this up. There's a two inch long uh, carriage bolt. Throw a nut and a wing nut on there, or rather a washer and a wing nut on there. And as you do this, you can see it closing down. This is designed to fit just right on a piece of three quarter inch EMT. If you take a collet and you slide it on here like you can see, oh, look, it spins around. Well, obviously not if you tighten up the wing nut, right? 
tighten up the wing nut, and now I can really grab and, and, and really torque on that sucker, and it's not going anywhere, okay? The idea of the collet is you put a collet on there, you take your weight, your counterweight plate or something, you know, steal one from your friend's dumbbell set, slide it on here, take another collet on the other side, clamp it on over here to trap that weight in here so that it doesn't slide off and fall on your head. Or it also won't then slide the other way on your boom and be, slide in closer to the main fulcrum that you're using to hold your, your boom, right? So that's what you're supposed to do with these things, all right? So let's look at the, uh, here's, a, here's a cross block. Now this one's printed with a little less meat on it than the ones that I uh, you saw on my boom. The ones on my boom are my first draft ones. These are printed, by the way, with uh, PETG. PETG is kind of softer when it comes out of the printer, and it really wants to stick to itself when it prints. So it turns out that, you know, delaminating this, if I, you know, take the bolt out, of course, and try to pull this thing apart, this is really super strong in here. I mean, even pulling the support material off when you print your material really wants to stick on there, okay? That's a great feature. It's also, like I said, a little bit soft, not brittle, in other words. These are going to be really strong, which is what you want if you're going to hang 12 pounds of metal over your head. Uh, if you use PLA, and your printer's not really perfect, it may not, you know, each one of these laminations may not be stuck together. And when you tighten this sucker down, you might fracture it or something. Uh, so I didn't really like the idea of uh, PLA when I printed these blocks, okay? Uh, by no means would you try this with something like uh, high-impact polystyrene, you know, hips. No way. That stuff's super brittle. You do that, this will probably, you know, crack or something. This block right here, I bet I could drive over this with a car, and it would come out other than maybe a scratch underneath here from the asphalt. That's not going to break. This, this is going to take a ton of uh, uh, force to destroy this thing, all right? Again, think about what you're doing. This thing can fall on your head. Uh, okay, so how do you do this stuff, right? You just This one's just got two bolts, right? Slide in a piece of conduit here, slide a piece of conduit in there, and when you're done, then this gives you your, you know, your axis of rotation this way as well as the one here, right? So each time you use a block, you got another degree of freedom. Here is a high-quality camera mount with nothing on it, and here's the... Uh, uh, version one camera mount. They both kind of work the same way. There's a cutout in here like this and some holes like this. The idea with these holes is I kind of tinkered around and experimented with this uh, to pick the exact hole for exact. You, this will be related to your layer height and your nozzle size and stuff like that with your printer. My nozzle is a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. It's a pretty big hole in the nozzle. And I printed with a Z height of 0.4 millimeters. So this is a really coarse. This is really, you know, really sloppy. Uh, print it really quickly, put tons of, you know, uh, really thick layers and stuff like that so that it prints quicker. All right. And it, it looks don't really matter that much uh, in this case. I just need a functional block that's sturdy and going to survive. So how do you do this? These, this is an M2.5 bolt that is 6 millimeters long. You can buy these in Granger, a bag of these for like 4 or 5 bucks. Uh, you, the, uh, the idea is that um, you know, when you print this, by the way, I print it like this, and I have support me material on this end because otherwise you're you know printing this thing in the air and the whole thing will just fall down on itself. So when you're done, pull that material off. Be careful and make sure you get all the material out of there. Uh, whoever designed this PC board put these parts so close to the edge. It's like just crazy. Uh, so uh, if you don't have the uh, cutout cleaned up enough and you decide to just put this on, I mean, pay attention to what you're doing. Make sure that you can slide it around like this. Uh, let me see if I get a better view. When I What I do is, is I put a camera on there and I kind of slide it around to make really sure that it can move beyond where it really needs to be once I put these screws in because if you put a screw in it really trying to push it sideways when you when when you tighten it up against you know one of these outer walls you could shear off some of the parts on the board now, of course putting these things in with the lens off <laughs> would be easier but it's already assembled and the allen wrench reaches as you can see over the lens uh, the key is you need to be able to spin it around without it running into the lens all the time. Now, uh, what am I uh, on about here? Well, this M2.5 bolt. I push down gently on the on the Allen wrench when I'm when I'm putting this up. I can get my hand out of the way of the shot here. 
There we go. Uh, and it will self-tap, okay? I love this self-tapping uh, screw thing. Uh, it's it's fantastic. M2.5 is the same size bolt you need to mount like Raspberry Pi and stuff like that. As you can see in this piece here, these are the same bolts. So you buy one bag of M2.5s, you can mount your Pies, you can mount your high quality cameras and so on. The bolt size for the uh, version one cameras, these are smaller bolts. These are M2 bolts, and but otherwise they're the same thing. These will just self tap and thread in. Now when you're tightening these things up, in my design anyway, if you're going to use all this, you know, you, 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 you can feel it get snug. You don't have to uh, torque these things down. You're not replacing a tire on a car, but molding a wheel on onto the hub, right? Uh, just get it a little bit snug so it doesn't move, and, and you're done. If you keep tightening, what will happen is, remember, you're, you're, you're screwing. <laughs> these are stainless steel bolts. Uh, into plastic and if you keep going it'll just tear the plastic out all right so don't go nuts you're not you know this isn't a, a muscle beach over here right uh, so i try to put all four bolts in you could probably just get away these don't weigh that much you could just put the two in on a kitty corner and be done with it without any real problems don't do this with only one bolt because it'll want to sag a little bit and you could end up bending the PC board ever so slightly, which would cause uh, larger chips like the sensor itself to fracture or become uh, unsoldered, pop off the circuit board. You never want to bend a circuit board ever, okay? To that end, I didn't do this. Now that I think about that, it's probably a foolish thing. Uh, what I usually do with the camera mounts is I'll take the, uh, the block and I, let's say this was a camera mount piece. You see, I don't know how well this would show up on the camera. You see there's little bumps and stuff on there? If you really torque this thing down and there's a little bump in there, that little bump will cause, the again, the circuit board to, to bend, to accommodate and, and, and conform over these bumps. You don't want that. So quite often I will take a piece of, of sandpaper, take the block, the, the side of the block that mounts, the, where I mount the camera, and just sand it a little bit to take off anything at all and make sure it's super flat before I mount the, uh, the, uh, the camera on there. In fact, I'll probably take this apart after the video and do just that, uh, just to make sure. You might need to do that for these as well, but uh, it turns out that uh, this here is actually kind of like a foamy taped on there. This is less likely to screw up just due to the nature of how the board is designed. But again, uh, you, you it depends on your printer, right? If you got any rough edge, just sand that sucker down. Raspberry Pi mounting block, same kind of a thing. There are four holes that match the four holes on your Raspberry Pi. M2.5 bolt, stick it in there, tighten it up. The, uh, you probably don't need to put all bolts in if you don't really want to, but if you decide to put a connector on here and then you pull this sucker off, you want both of these bolts on here. Otherwise, the board could, as you can see, a little bit, it would flex up and you could crack something. Don't do that. I definitely want to put these two bolts in here as well because you, if you want to plug in your power and your video monitor to watch it on the preview, you don't want the board flexing again. You know, it's all about preventing the board from flexing because the Pi mount does not actually have edges. This is not sitting on anything around it. You just have these uh, these four points of contact here. There's not much really to sand down uh, to worry about, you know, flexing the board as much as the high quality sensors. Again, you got your uh, two inch um, carriage bolt here to uh, do your business. So that's really all there is to building a, a, a you know a ceiling mounted boom uh, for some Raspberry Pi cameras. And you, obviously, you can make uh, take this block design and mount anything you want on there, uh, lights and and other such things as well. Uh, let me know what you're going to do with these things and show me. Post some videos. That's the whole reason I share a lot of this stuff. I mean, uh, I like making stuff. I like learning things, too. I watch plenty of maker videos on YouTube. Uh, if you've got anything cool, uh, throw one together and film it. And let me know what you like or even don't like about this particular design, right? I mean, critical comments, always welcome. And if you create new uh, designs or improve on these, please put pull requests on, uh, on the GitHub repo and uh, let me know how to make it better for everybody. All right? Thanks for watching. See you next time.